I'm going to show you how to do a basic guitar setup. This is a method I've used for a long time. It's straightforward. Most people can learn to do this. I'm only going to use a few basic tools and a couple of tools to measure with. So let's get started. I recommend following the manufacturer's suggested specifications for guitar. And I'm going to put in the link, uh, the Fender, Gibson, Gretsch, all the manufacturers have posted specifications for neck relief, for string height, for pickup height. And uh, I recommend starting there. They're, they're good starting points. You can adjust the taste after that. A lot of people will do that. But those are good places to start, and the guitars will play great and sound great set up to those specifications. It also makes it easy for somebody who's just learning how to do this or doesn't have a lot of experience because you can use tools to measure and set the guitar to those specifications and it doesn't require too much touch or feel to be able to do that. So these are the tools I'm going to use on this guitar. This is a, a Gretsch 5427 which is really so, uh, similar to a Gretsch 5420. Uh, this is a new guitar. It still has the original factory strings on it and I'm going to actually change these strings out and install a set of uh, TIJS flats. I'm going to use a few basic tools for this and this is all it's going to take. First, uh, I've got a number one size uh, Phillips head screwdriver here. This is going to be used for the uh, truss rod cover and I'm also going to have to take the pick guard off on this uh, to, uh, to get to the uh, screws for the pickups on this particular guitar. I've got a pair of wire cutters to cut the strings. I've got the Allen wrench that came with the guitar to adjust the truss rod with. Uh, I'm going to use a string winder. I'm going to use a Jim Dunlop uh, string action gauge and there are other companies that make these. They work well. I'm going to use an automotive feeler gauge that you can get at any auto parts store. Uh, this is a 8 thousandths of an inch, which is what Gretsch recommends for their neck relief. Other manufacturers will have different numbers, so you can follow that. And I'll show you how I use these tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is put strings on this guitar. I'm going to take these off, and I'm going to show you a simple way to get strings back on a Bixby with a pin uh, that doesn't have the uh, string through a Bixby like some of the newer ones. So these strings have been on a little bit. It's a new guitar. I'm not going to try to save these. I'm going to cut them back here uh, near the back pickup. It's going to make it easier to get them off. And another thing too, unless there's a compelling reason to do it, like you're on a, let's say a, a bolt-on neck guitar like a Fender, if you're going to actually be taking the neck off the guitar for something, you're going to do fret work on it or something, or maybe you're going to clean the fretboard. It's easier on most guitars just to change the strings one string at a time. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got the first string off. And this is a set of uh, TI Jazz, uh, the swing set 11 through 47. These are flat wounds. So again, doing one string at a time. So the easiest way to install the, these uh, on a Bixby bridge like this is to take a nice big heavy pair of pliers like this. This is a set of lineman pliers. And I'm actually going to gonna put the uh, ball end into the line pliers like this. And I'm actually going to sort of pre-bend this over. I'm not going to bend it all the way, but I'm going to get a little bend on it. Something like that. And now, when I put this through the bridge and pin it, it's going to want to stay in place more or less. I'm not fighting with the string quite so much. I'm still going to need to hold some tension on it, which I can do with my elbow. Once I get this started, it'll be fairly straightforward getting the string in. I want to get about two or two and a half wraps across each post. Okay, once the string's staying attuned more or less for me pulling on it, kind of stretching it into place, I'm going to go ahead and clip the end of it off. And that's it. String installed. So I'm going to do the other five strings and uh, speed that up a little bit. We don't need to watch each one of them and uh, come back after that. So I'm going to get the string and I'm actually, when I get it in place, I'm going to pull it like, like this. And it's going to lock this string into place now. Um, and it's going to make it really easy for me to start winding it. I don't have to try to hold the string while I'm doing it. Okay, so that's how you install a set of strings. Uh, that's an easy way to do it on a Bixby bridge. If you'll kind of pre-bend that string a little bit so it fits right up underneath the, uh, the roller and right into the little peg, it makes it pretty straightforward. You kind of use your elbow to hold the string on. You can kind of lock the strings in place once you get them here so you can wind it. It's really not too hard to string one of these. There's, there's really, I, I think if you follow this method, you don't have to use one of these replacement things that hold the strings in the back of the Bixby or even the, the string through Bixby. This is really not hard to do. So anyway, that's how you put strings on. Okay, so we got a brand new set of strings. Uh, these are different brand, different gauge, so the whole guitar really needs to be set up now. Uh, I'm going to start by tuning it up. 
Okay, when you're setting a guitar up, the first thing to do is get it in tune. The second thing you need to do is set the relief of the neck. Uh, no neck is going to play very well if it's dead straight. There needs to be a slight concave to the neck. This is exaggerated, but this is kind of what the neck has to do. Not going to be dead straight, right? The manufacturers will have a specification on their various websites. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, link those in the description below. The one for Gretsch is eight thousandths of an inch. So what that means is that if I use the string as a straight edge, right, if I press down at, at, at both ends at the first fret and at the end of the neck here, uh, at the eighth fret, I should be able to get an eight thousandths feeler gauge uh, on between the fret and the string, between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. So I've got an eight thousandths feeler gauge here. Uh, again, this is something you can get at any auto parts store. These will come in like a set. They'll have a whole bunch of different gauges. A little tip, they, they usually have like some three-in-one oil or something on them to keep them from tarnishing in the store. Uh, I, I go ahead and clean that off with some alcohol and... Uh, uh, cloth and try to just try to clean them up a little bit before I use them on a guitar. So I'm going to check this now. The first, let's let's just see how close we are. And what? So the easy way to do this is to put a capo on the first fret, and then you can just sort of hold the string down at the last fret, and then use the string as a straight edge and just measure at the eighth fret. I can't find my capo, so you could do this easily with two picks. These are this is a medium and a heavy. Two heavies would probably work even better. But I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm wedging the string the pick between the strings like that. And that's gonna hold that low E string down against that first fret, just as if I had a capo on there. I only need one string down, I don't need them all down. So now I'm gonna measure this at the eighth fret and see where I am. Okay, that is really, really, really close. Um, it can be tightened just a hair, so I'll do that just to show how that's done here. So on this guitar, uh, I've got to take a little cover off the truss rod. Uh, this is not something you're going to have to do on every guitar. Sometimes the truss rod adjustment will be at the neck end of the guitar. Sometimes it's going to be up at the headstock end. On vintage fenders, it's going to be at the neck end. Uh, the, the tools, you, generally they're going to use an Allen wrench. Make sure you use the right size Allen key, though. You don't want to strip this whole, the uh, bolt out. So make sure the one that comes with the guitar, most of the guitars will come with a set of Allen keys, and one of them would be for this. The vintage fenders, you're going to actually use a flathead screwdriver, a large flathead screwdriver for that. Even though it looks like a Phillips head, it's a large flathead. Generally going to be righty tighty, lefty loosey, just like most bolts. So if I, if you're adjusting from this end to tighten it up, we're going to go this way. In the loose end, we're going to go this way. It's going to be just the opposite if you're doing this end, obviously, as I'm looking at the guitar. So let's see where we are on this. Okay, and, and I never want, I only turned about an eighth of a turn there. I never want to go more than a quarter of a turn at a time. A little bit goes a long way on a truss rod adjustment, a, a, about a half a turn at max if the guitar was already set up. But quarter of a turn is going to probably be more than enough most of the time one way or the other. Some truss rods too are double action truss rods. When you tighten the truss rod up, it's going to straighten the neck out. If I loosen the truss rod, it's going to let it bend a little bit more because the strings are going to be pulling against the neck. It's going to want to pull it into this concave position. When I tighten the truss rod, the truss rod is going to act against that and pull it backwards. So you have a balance between the truss rod and the strings. That's how you get the neck where it needs to be. So I'm going to check this again at the 8th fret. Yeah, and that's right on. It was really close. If there had been not enough relief, if the neck was too straight, I would have gone the other way. Uh, on, a double, on a single acting truss rod, it's only going to straighten the neck, so it only, it's only going to work in one direction. As you loosen it, eventually it'll just come off the nut that's on it, on the guitar, it'll, it'll come back off. Uh, on a double action truss rod, whenever you tighten it up, it'll straighten the neck out. Whenever you get it loose, you'll get to a point where the nut feels kind of loose. It's not doing anything. If you keep going, it'll catch again, and it can actually push the neck in the other direction. It can work either way. Uh, the American Fender guitars are like that, and I think these Gretches are like that too, actually. Uh, some of them are, I know. Uh, I'm not going to spin this back around to, to uh, see if they are. So I'm just going to replace the truss rod cover here because this is right on now. This is, this is dead on where it needs to be. So a couple of things. Uh, if you encounter a lot of resistance when you're turning the truss rod nut, you, you need to stop. And if you're inexperienced, that may be a point where we want to take it to somebody who has more experience working on guitars. On a new guitar like this, if the truss rod's working right, it shouldn't be an issue to be able to turn it some in either direction. Again, you don't want to go too far, but a half a turn is about all you'd ever want to turn a truss rod uh, adjuster. If it's or if the neck is already somewhere close, that's even going to be too much, probably a quarter of a turn. I'd start with an eighth to a quarter of a turn, and just a little bit goes a long way. Where I live, as we get into the uh, cooler months, the necks tend to straighten. Uh, we have less humidity, the necks straighten. As we get into the warmer months, we have a lot more humidity, and the necks tend to have more, more uh, bow to the neck. So, season 
incidental adjustments can be necessary on necks. Some of them stay straighter than others. It depends on the wood. Again, it's important to have the right tool, whether it's an Allen wrench, then, and if it is, you use, try to use the one that came with the guitar or use the correct size. It should be a really nice tight fit. If there's any slop at all in the uh, Allen key when you put it into the nut, don't use that one. Find the correct size because you definitely don't want to be stripping that out. The ones that adjust at the heel end, some of them uh, have little cutouts and it's easy to get a tool in there. Some of them don't. The vintage style fenders uh, the, 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 um, and, and the old fenders uh, didn't have that. And, and sometimes on certain guitars, some of the bases, and when I just, I've got some bases that are reissues, and I'm able to get a screwdriver in there enough if I take the pit guard off to be able to adjust the neck. But sometimes you actually do need to pull the neck off, and maybe not all the way off. You can actually loosen the screw sometimes and just pop it up enough to make an adjustment. It's a little more trouble to do that, but that's how that's done. Uh, again, just don't, don't over tighten anything. On base necks especially, sometimes I'll actually, if I could show you this in this position, but I'll have the, I'll put the base on the floor and I'll hold it sort of against my legs and I could pull the neck into position before I actually turn it. So I'm actually taking some of the relief or some of the tension off the neck and, and sort of using the truss rod nut to sort of take that slack up. So anyway, that can be a good uh, good good technique too. So that's a basic uh, truss rod adjustment. Again, we're trying to get the relief in the neck to uh, something close to factory specifications. Uh, if you'll if you'll look at whatever your particular guitar is, if you look at the, uh, the the manual that's available online or that came with the guitar, it's going to have a suggested uh, relief uh, setting for the neck. I'd start there. You can tweak any of these settings and people, some people like a little more relief. It depends on how hard you play. But if you'll start from the manufacturer recommended specification and, 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 and season to taste, that, that's a pretty good policy. All right, so let's set the uh, string action on the guitar. Uh, we've, we've put on a new set of strings. Uh, we've tuned the guitar up. We've set the relief according to the manufacturer specifications and a few basic tools. Uh, and now we're going to set the action. This is the next. You need to do things in this order. This is the next thing to do. Now, on this particular guitar, Gretsch recommends uh, setting the action to 4 64ths, and that would be from the top of the string, unfretted, uh, to the bottom of the fret at the 12th fret. And I've got a string action gauge here that makes it easy to measure that. And again, the, the, uh, the, the specifications for the different guitars, I've, I'm going to link down below in the description so you can find those. It's going to be 4 64ths, and Gretsch recommends that across all six strings. To me, that, that is, action is a little bit low. I'm going to go ahead and set this guitar here to start with. I may set the, the lower strings, the thicker strings, at about 4 64 Generally, I find most guitars set up best for most playing styles uh, with the, uh, the, the low E string starting at 5 64 the high end, uh, E string at 4 64 and then just kind of graduate it down from low, the low E to the high E. But we're going to start with about 4 here on this. Uh, unfretted, I'm going to put the uh, and this has got measurements for 64 and 30 seconds and millimeters, and there's a lot of different ways to measure with this. Uh, I'm going to use the 64th, uh, 64th measurement that's on the gauge. Uh, that one's pretty easy to read and see. I'm going to start by measuring all the strings so we have a starting point. I think the low E is just a touch low. I think the A is just a touch low. I think the D is on. The G looks good. The B and the high E all look good. So I'm going to raise the low E and A strings just a little bit. Uh, some guitars, like a, a Fender Stratocaster or a Telecaster, are going to have individual uh, settings for each string or maybe each two strings in the case of Tele's with the vintage style uh, bridge saddles. On a Gretsch, and, and this is going to be very similar to a lot of Gibsons too, SG's and Les Paul's and 335's, they're all going to have this tunomatic style bridge, and you can't adjust each end of, uh, in, in the height of each individual string. The bridge actually has a radius to it already across the strings like this to mirror the radius that's on the fretboard. I think it's 12 inches on the Gretsch. It's 12 inches on most uh, Gibsons too, I think. A lot of modern fenders are nine and a half inches, uh, but but the, the bridge should uh, mirror the uh, radius of the fingerboard. So I have two adjustment wheels here, which will let me pull the bridge up from either side. Um, I can do the, the high E side, can lower it or raise it. I can do the low E side lower to raise it. So I'm just going to bring up the uh, the low E side just a little bit. Now it's easier if you tune the strings down to do this on a Gibson style guitar or a Gretsch with a tunomatic style bridge. So I'm going to see where that is. So let's see where we are now.
Yeah, that looks good. So I think this is this is at 464, so all the way across the strings now. This is the Gretsch recommended setup specification. Uh, again, for a lot of players, for me, this is not my guitar. Uh, for a lot of players, uh, I'd set the, uh, the action on the low strings just a little bit higher. And I may come back and adjust that after I play this some and see how it's playing. Uh, but but this is what uh, uh, Gretsch has in their their manual for their suggested setup specifications. So we set the neck relief at eight thousandths of an inch. We set the string action uh, at uh, four sixty fourths across all six strings. We've used a couple of basic tools to do that. A string action gauge, which is available from a lot of places. I think I got this one off Amazon. Uh, an automotive feeler gauge, eight thousandths of an inch is is common for the Gretsches. A lot of the fenders are ten thousandths of an inch, but that's all going to be available in the uh, in the manual on fender style bridge where you have individual adjustments. On the vintage style bridges, it's going to be a tiny flathead screw. Uh, you're going to need a pretty small, small screwdriver to adjust that. A lot of times, it's before you adjust the action on a string, uh, whether it's this style bridge or an individual saddle style bridge like a fender, it's, it's best to go ahead and tune the string down just a little bit so there's not so much tension on it, especially if you're trying to raise the string a little bit. But on the, on the vintage style fenders, it's going to be a flathead screwdriver. On uh, modern fenders, it's going to be a little Allen wrench. The Allen wrenches are generally going to come with the guitar. You want to make sure you use the correct size, though, uh, so you're not stripping anything out. So make sure it's a nice, tight fit. Uh, and, and you, you can go back and forth with the with the measuring gauge uh, and and get that right where it needs to be. Simple to do. Okay, so after we get a new set of strings on, we've tuned the guitar, we set the relief in the neck, we set the string action, all according to manufacturer specifications with a few simple tools. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, set the intonation on the guitar. So the intonation is going to be affected by the uh, string height. The higher the strings are off the fretboard, the further the saddle is going to have to be back from whatever the number is for the length of the scale. For example, on a, a, a Fender guitar that's 25 and a half inches, uh, it'd be 25 and a half inches from the nut to the bridge saddle if you measured it. Uh, and if you weren't bending the string because you were pressing it down on the fretboard, that number would be correct and all the math would work and the frets would just be in tune. But whenever the strings actually press down, it's stretching that string a little bit, uh, which is going to cause it to go sharp. So we have to compensate for that by actually pulling that saddle back slightly. And the higher the action, the more I'm going to stretch the string to get it down to the fret and the more sharp it's going to get, so the further I have to pull this saddle back. So I'm going to show you a simple method for doing this. Uh, there, there are other ways, and if you, if you have something that's already working, just stick with that. I've got an accurate tuner here. This is a Sonic Research uh, Turbo Tuner, the S2-2000. Any accurate tuner is going to work fine for this. Uh, but what I do, so I've got the guitar in tune now. Go ahead and tune all the strings up. So I'm going to start by uh, tuning. Uh, I'm going to hit the, the harmonic at the 12th fret, and I'm going to get that in tune. And that's right on now. And then I'm going to fret this note. And I'm going to see if those are the, if, if this is also in tune. Now I can see this fretted note is pretty sharp. You can see that's pretty close. And when I fret the note, you'll see it's very sharp. So I know I need to move this bridge saddle for this high string back towards the back of the guitar. Okay, and I'm going to go a little bit at a time. This is fairly sharp, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it back. I'm going to give it a couple of turns uh, the first time. Uh, obviously, if it was closer, I wouldn't move the saddle back as much. So I'm going to tune the string down a little bit. These are a little bit trickier to adjust than on a fender because you have to come in from this direction, and it's a small flathead screw. But uh, when you turn this screw, you'll notice it's going to move this bridge saddle back and forth, right? So I'm going to push the bridge saddle back towards the bridge, or back towards the big speed. Okay, so pull that back some. Gonna tune the string back up. We're still just a little bit sharp, but it's better than it was. I'm going to tune the string back down a little bit. You don't have to tune it all the way down. Just take some of the tension off of it. That's right on. So we're looking good. Go ahead and do the other five strings. Same thing. If you tune the harmonic at the 12th fret and get that in tune, and then you press the string down at the 12th fret, if the note of the 12th fret is sharp of the harmonic, we're going to pull that bridge saddle back. If it's flat of the harmonic, we're going to push it forward. And we're going to do that until we can get these two to match up, which is where we are now. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other five strings. 
Okay, so the next thing to do, we've, uh, we've set the relief in the neck, we've set the action, we've set the intonation. Uh, plays great, it's in tune now, sounds great. So the last thing to do uh, is to set the height of the pickups, and uh, we'll just use the. Uh, th th this is uh, something that uh, different people are going to have different uh, things that they like. Some people are going to like the pickups closer to the string, some further away. It's going to depend on the pickups. We're going to start with Gretsch's uh, suggested uh, settings for the pickups and uh, and go from there. And that's what I'd recommend for most guitars. So what Gretsch recommends uh, for uh, pickup height specifications uh, is going to be. Uh, four sixty fourths on the treble side on the pickups. That's going to be from the pickup to the string, and uh, six sixty fourths on the bass side. Now they're not clear about how to measure that on their website. Uh, there aren't any extra instructions. But generally, the way you're going to do this, and I'm going to do this on this guitar, uh, I'm going to hold the string down at the last fret. I'm going to measure from the top of the pole pieces on the pickup to the bottom of the string, and I'm going to use my string action gauge again just to get these right on. Now, on a pickup like this, uh, these the, the individual pole pieces are also adjustable. Uh, there's a screw that you can tighten or loosen to move the pole pieces up and down so that you can actually uh, stagger the pole pieces into a radius uh, that's, uh, that matches the uh, the bridge and the fingerboard. And it looks like they've done a decent job at the factory getting that pretty close. So so we're just gonna, going to uh, uh, leave those like they are for now and just move the whole pick up. Uh, one other thing too, on some guitars, you, you'll actually have to, to pull the pick guard off. The, these bottom two uh, Pickup adjuster screws are under this pick guard. I'm going to pull this off and, uh, and get this out of the way so that we can adjust the pickups. So I'm going to use my string action gauge uh, to measure the pickups. Again, holding down at the 12th fret, measuring the distance between the top of the pole piece and the bottom of the string. Okay, so I know this is a little bit low. It's about eight. Still just a little bit low. Okay, that's pretty close. So I'm going to do the treble side. And that's also low. Generally, when you tighten the screw up, it's going to raise the pickup. If you loosen the screw, it's going to lower the pickup. Okay, that's right on. Okay, so try the other pickup. A little bit low, and that looks good. So now we're right on. I've got it at about 664 from the uh, bottom of the string uh, to the uh, top of the pole piece with the string pressed to the last fret, and then about 464 on the low E string, and about 464 on the high E string. So you can season the taste, play the guitar. If, if one of the pickups is, is too much louder than the other, you can adjust the pickups, but it's a good starting point. Start from the manufacturer's suggested setting and, uh, and, and adjust from there by ear. Okay, so we've done a basic uh, guitar setup. Again, this is a straightforward setup. Most people can easily learn to do this and they can work on their own guitars. You don't need any special skills or really even any special tools to do this. Um, I used a couple of different screwdrivers. I used a string winder. Uh, automotive feeler gauge. Uh, I guess the only specialized tool would be one of these string action gauges. These are really handy. You can get these from any of the music stores online. You may be able to find them local depending on where you live. Uh, Amazon's got them. There are a bunch of different brands. Uh, this is one made by Jim Dunlop. This one seems to be accurate. I have actually measured it with an accurate ruler and the, the settings are accurate on it. So using some simple tools like that and a few things to measure, the string action gauge and the uh, feeler gauge, uh, it was easily able to set this to the Gretsch's recommended specifications. I'm going to post in the description below a link to the different specifications from Fender and Gretsch. So you can pull those up and easily find them. It's going to be a good starting point. You can always adjust this to taste. But a good place to start is a manufacturer's uh, suggested specifications that are available online. And again, link below. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, please consider subscribing and liking. And uh, I'll see you next time.